internet shouldn't be rigged to benefit big corporations, and that means real net neutrality, and we will fight for it. Think of how beneficial the internet has been to all of us in the last 20, 25, 30 years. It's completely revolutionized so many parts of society. Well, the internet has been so beneficial to us in large part because it's been largely unregulated. There's been far less regulation of the internet as there has been for other modes of communi communication. Far less regulation of the internet than there has been of television or radio or telephones, things like that. Now, what has happened in this environment of a largely unregulated internet, the internet having been essentially the wild, wild west of our generation? What has been the consequences of that? Well, we've seen all kinds of business opportunities, new business models pop up because of the internet and using the internet. All kinds of people who have gone from relatively modest circumstances to being absolutely wealthy because of the internet, all kinds of innovations and ideas and businesses and goods and services and how you deliver those goods and services because of the internet. I mean, think of things like Amazon and uh, eBay and Netflix and things like that. All of those came about organically without any government interference, without much government regulation. They popped up because People communicated with each other and it became apparent those were the things that people wanted. And businesses followed suit. No government needed to be involved with it. And going away from business, think about the tremendous diversity and tremendous wide range of thought and, and speaking and, uh, and, and philosophy and things like that that you encounter on the internet on a daily basis. You can get information and viewpoints on any subject you can think of from any part of the political spectrum that you want to find it on the internet at the touch of a button. I don't know that we've had such a wide range of political and philosophical discourse in this world as what we've had the last 20 or 30 years over the internet. Far more than we've had at any other point in American history. And I think we're better off for it. I think we're a much more well-informed public for it. And guess what? The government didn't have to have a lot of regulation for that to happen. Ideas and thought and arguments for all types of things, all types of uh, political viewpoints that you never could have gotten on television or radio back in the old days. You know, things that are uh, regulated by the government quite heavily. In fact, a great example is this very show that we've been doing for three years entirely on the internet. Do you realize that if it weren't for the internet, if we had to rely on television and radio, methods of communication that are severely governed by the government. If we had to rely on that, we probably couldn't be on the air. Especially if this show existed back in, let's say, the 1960s or 1970s when the FCC regulations were just ungodly over the top. Man, if you go back to the 1960s, this show could not have been on television. Probably didn't realize that, did you? No, it couldn't. This very show, the way that we do it, would have been would have been off the air because it would have violated FCC regulations at that time. Reason being, we don't waste the time and we don't waste the uh, resources to bring the other side on here and let them argue their point. They've got plenty of other places they can do that. We don't need them here. But the FCC would have forced us to do it if we were on television back then. Or, indirectly, the FCC could have gotten us off the air if we were on television in those days because... You know, if, if we came out here and did the show that we did, the TV stations would have been obligated under law to go out and find another viewpoint from another show and put them on the air. Well, the TV stations largely didn't want to deal with that. So the result was a lot of great conservative shows that came from people like H.L. Hunt and Dan Smoot. They got taken off the air because the stations didn't want to deal with the FCC regulations. You see, that is what government regulation does to stifle thought stifle discourse, stifle political opinion. And it hasn't happened on the internet up to now. So when I hear anybody talk of any sort of government regulation of the internet, I my, my antenna perk up real quick. I don't think that's a good idea. It's the ultimate slippery slope. We have benefited from the lack of regulation of the internet. We have far more free speech and free discourse than we've ever had before. Now, to the specific issue that Elizabeth Warren is talking about, about the uh, different kind of tiered bandwidths and tiered services that the service that the uh, internet companies could provide. She's got a real problem with that, but I don't see why. Look at virtually any other business. Amazon, if you order a book from them or some other product, 
and you want it delivered the next day, you can pay a little bit more money and get a better service and get that to you the next day. If you if you go drop off a package at FedEx, you can pay a little bit more for better shipping, for, for shipping overnight. You can do that. Well, if we understand that these telephone companies and internet providers are undertaking the risk of bringing the internet to you, undertaking the uh, expense of bringing the internet to you, and undertaking all that risk and, and hiring people and the risk that goes involved with that and all the risks in technology and the investment there well doesn't it make sense that they should be the ones to determine a pricing system that might be best profitable for them and doesn't it also make sense that if some company does it some other company might say hey we want to take market share from them we'll give you the better service for a lesser price or for free on our end so in other words we believe in the old southern phrase if it ain't broke don't fix it we believe that the internet is not broken and that the risk of allowing the government to begin having any degree of regulatory power over the internet would be far greater than any potential rewards of giving the government such power and we are willing to fight to keep the government out of the internet